Ukrainian troops killed another 1,300 Russian soldiers during hostilities in the past 24 hours, brining Kremlin's total losses in the war to approximately 668,930 personnel, the general staff of Ukrainian armed forces reported. In a statement posted on its Facebook page on Sunday, the general staff also revealed Russia's losses in terms military hardware and equipment. Thus, Ukraine destroyed nine Russian ranks, 49 armored combat vehicles, 29 artillery systems, one multiple launch rocket system, MLRS, two air defense systems, 45 operational tactical UAVs, 71 vehicles and fuel tanks, one unit of specialized equipment over the past day. Overall, Russia lost 19,410 artillery systems, 1,231 multiple launch rocket systems, MLRs, 978 air defense systems, 369 aircraft, 329 helicopters, 16,992 operational tactical UAVs, 2,619 cruise missiles, 28 warships and boats boats, one submarine, 26,584 vehicles and fuel tanks, 3,435 units of specialized equipment since the start of the full-fledged invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. Russia has not publicized the number of its military losses in the war yet. After the excitement over the Ukrainian raid into Kursk region died down, Russia's main offensive on the front began to dominate again. Ukrainian troops are retreating under pressure from the slow advance of the Russian army in the Donbass, where it has a significant advantage in numbers and firepower. According to The Economist, citing Ukrainian sources, Ukrainian forces have withdrawn from Volodar and fighting is continuing in the Toretsk sector, but as of today, no significant advances have been recorded there. However, Russia has yet to capture important towns such as Chasovyar and Pokrovsk. The latter remains a key logistical hub for Ukraine, but Russian troops are stuck fighting for it. Throughout August, there was much discussion of a possible rapid fall of Pokrovsk, but the Russian advance has slowed and there have been no significant territorial gains in the last three weeks. According to Nico Lang, a former German defense official, Russia does not have the strength to launch a full-scale offensive on Pokrovsk, despite the proximity of artillery to the city. Taking Pokrovsk would allow Russia to continue its offensive into central Ukraine and worsen logistics in the southern Donbass. However, even if successful, the operation could last for months and inflict heavy losses on Russian troops. Despite fears of a possible collapse of Ukrainian defenses, Kyiv continues its strategy of gradually surrendering territory while inflicting maximum losses on the enemy. Russian losses, especially in men and equipment, are growing to a thousand soldiers a day and Soviet armored stocks may run out as early as next year. The Institute for the Study of War reports that Russia lost at least five armored divisions in the battle for Pokrovsk, significantly weakening its position. Russia's artillery superiority is also declining, although it is increasingly dependent on unreliable ammunition from North Korea. If at the beginning of the year the ratio of artillery shelling was 10 to 1 in Russia's favor, now this gap has narrowed to 2.5 to 1. This was made possible by an increase in the supply of shells from Allies and Ukraine's own production, as well as successful strikes on Russian ammunition depots. However, the publication notes that the Russian Federation has not achieved the main goal of the offensive. Despite the current gloom about Ukraine's prospects, Russia is far from achieving its main goal of taking control of the Donetsk and Luhansk regions by the end of this year. And while Russia has set a goal of dislodging Ukrainian forces from the Kursk region by the beginning of this month, it now looks like it will take much longer and require significantly more force. North Korean soldiers are fighting in Ukraine. Some of the troops are undergoing training in Russia for potential future deployment alongside Russian forces, according to the Institute for the Study of War, ISW. According to the Washington Post, both Ukrainian and South Korean officials confirm that North Korean soldiers are operating in Ukraine alongside Russian troops. A representative of Ukraine's military intelligence stated that certain North Korean officers are observing Russian forces and studying the battlefield in Russian-occupied territories of Ukraine. 
However, Ukraine's defense forces have not yet independently detected North Korean units within Ukraine. The Ukrainian official also noted that several thousand North Korean infantrymen are currently training in Russia. He added that Russian military command could deploy them to the front lines in Ukraine by the end of 2024 or to Russia's border regions to free up Russian reserves for combat operations in Ukraine. South Korean and Ukrainian officials reported that North Korean troops are likely operating in the occupied Donetsk region. This was confirmed by a recent missile strike by Ukrainian forces which killed many North Korean officers. Analysts at the ISW have been unable to determine the scale of the North Korean troop presence that Russia may deploy to the front or the number of Russian forces that could be freed along the border. However, these scenarios could aid Russia's effort to bolster its primary offensive operations in Ukraine and delay the final phase of the Russian offensive known as Summer 2024. North Korean troop deployments to Ukraine could also create opportunities for Ukrainian exploitation depending on the quality force structure, arrangement and interoperability of North Korean forces. The ISW states, during a June visit to North Korea this year, Russian President Vladimir Putin and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un signed a comprehensive strategic partnership agreement. Under the agreement, in the event of aggression against one of the countries, the partner guarantees immediate mutual assistance. Today, North Korean troops are already participating in combat operations against Ukraine. They are operating in the temporarily occupied territories as advisors. In early October, a missile strike by Ukrainian forces near the temporarily occupied Donetsk killed six North Korean officers. According to military expert Pavlo Narozniyi, sending troops to assist Russian troops will have very negative consequences for North Korea.